Lord, open my lips. And my mouth shall proclaim your praise. I pray to you, O Lord. You hear my voice in the morning. At sunrise I offer my prayer. And wait for your answer. As the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship thee. You Father, we come before you, O God, with humble hearts, Lord, asking you please forgive us of our sins, Lord. We repent of them right now in the name of Jesus, that you may hear our prayer, O God. Father, we love you and we bless you and we exalt you. You are an awesome God and you alone are worthy to be praised. But Father, most of all, we lift up your children unto you, O God, asking that you meet us all at the center of our needs, O God. There are so many strongholds on your world. Father, we ask that those strongholds be broken. There are so many homeless people in your world, and we ask that you a house around them. Father, there are so many hungry people around this world, and we ask that you feed them, O oh God. Father, we ask that you heal the broken hearts, O oh God. Those who are in the hospital, as I pray, Father, I ask that you heal their bodies, Lord. Those who are watching this service by the internet. I ask that you bless their hearts, heal their bodies, encourage them, oh God. Help them get through this time. And we thank you in advance, oh God, for what you're about to do among us all. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray. Our Father. Our Father. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from 
A reading from 2 Samuel chapter 7. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan. Go and tell my servant David, thus says the Lord, Are you the one to build me a house to live in? I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day, but I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel whom I commanded to shepherd my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel. And I have been with you wherever you went, and have cut off all your enemies from before you. And I will make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more, and evildoers shall afflict them no more as formerly, from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel. And I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. When your days are fulfilled and you lie down with your ancestors, I will raise up your offspring after you, who shall come forth from your body, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build a house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. As chapter 7 of 2 Samuel opens up, we see that David is now settled in his house. The scripture says that the Lord has given him rest from his enemies. The battles, at least for now, have ceased, and Jerusalem has been established as the capital. And the Ark of God, what's also known as the Ark of the Covenant, is there in Jerusalem with them. The Ark represented the presence of God to the people of Israel. It had wandered in the wilderness with them for generations. It crossed the Jordan River with them and was with them through numerous battles as they conquered the land of Canaan. And it had stayed in the house of Abinadab 
right up to the point where David brought the ark to Jerusalem. I kind of picture Abinadab clearing out a corner of his garage and making a place for the ark of God to stay. Just, just as long as you need me to hold on to it, I'll be glad to. Now Jerusalem was established. The king's house was there, the ark of God was there, and the Lord had given David the king rest from his enemies. It was a season of peace, and David had an opportunity to reflect. And with that opportunity, David looks around, and something seems out of place. Something is, is not quite right. And he says, you know, I'm living here in a house of cedar, and yet the ark of God, the one who has guided us and shown us the way, is, is dwelling in a tent. He remembers how God had taken him from tending his father's flocks in Bethlehem and made him a shepherd over the nation of Israel. He remembers how God had seen him through so many battles. And yet the ark of God was living in a tent. And so he sets out to build a temple, to build a permanent home for the ark of God so that the presence of God would have a place. So he consults with the prophet Nathan, who gives him the go-ahead and says, you know, go and do what you desire because the Lord is with you. Now, I believe that David's intentions are good. I don't see anything in the scripture that would lead me to believe that David wants to build this temple as a monument to himself. David's heart and mind are really for God. But the focus is short term. David only really sees what's right around him. His sense of time is limited to the right now. And isn't that so true for us? So often we are distracted and see only what's right around us and fail to remember that God's vision and God's sense of time are so much longer than ours. The Psalms say that a thousand years in God's sight are like yesterday when it is past. So God makes a change of plans and visits with the prophet Nathan in the night and says, go and tell David, don't build a temple for me. When I was wandering in the wilderness with you, when I was seeing you through so many battles, did I ever say, why have you not made for me a house of cedar? No, you will not build me a house, the Lord says, but I will make you into a house. God has a longer range plan for David. David is thinking of what he can do for God, but overlooked what God might do with him. God promises to make David a house. God promises David a dynasty, a promise that there would always be a descendant of David to sit on the throne in Israel. But it was not David's responsibility to build this temple, but one of his sons. And that there would always be a son of David to reign. That promise, that hope, sustained the people of Israel when they were in exile in Babylon. That they knew that God had promised that there would always be a descendant of David to rule. That promise to David, that house that God was going to build, was the hope of a coming Messiah. It was not David's job to build a house for the ark of God, but God was going to build in David the hope for a nation. There's a song out of the mountain gospel tradition in the eastern United States. It's called, I'm Working on a Building. It goes, I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. Hallelujah. I'm working on a building for my Lord. Working on a building, I'm working on a building, hallelujah. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building, it's a Holy Ghost building, hallelujah. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. If I was a gambler, I'd tell you what I'd do. 
I'd quit my gambling and I'd work on the building too. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. Hallelujah. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost building. Hallelujah. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. And there are all kinds of verses like that, if I were. It talks about how we are being built into a dwelling place for God. How we are that. But so often, like David, we are distracted and we see what is immediately around us. We even think with good intentions of what we can do for God and neglect or forget or don't see what God is building in us and through us. Like the scripture says in, in the book of Ephesians in the second chapter, so then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. God is building each of us into a building, a dwelling place for God, a house for the presence of God to people who so desperately need to sense and feel and realize the presence of God. God is not just building, though, in us individually, but God is building us together into a dwelling place for God that we might be hope not just to ourselves, but to our families, to our communities, to our nations, even to the world, because God is working and building in us. I'm working on a building. You're working on a building. And together God is building us together into a sacred and holy space, a dwelling place for God, hope and peace for the nations. So many of us enjoy the scriptures that talk about the old rugged cross and at the cross and many of us have come to believe in Christ because of thinking about that sacrifice of Jesus there. And truly while those verses and that scripture is so important to us and for so many of you that may be your favorite song, but how we know how to live for Jesus is a different place and it's this table. This is a place that God has set for us. We just pass on what Jesus gave to us that 
this bread reminds us of the broken body of Christ. This juice reminds us of the new covenant that we have to live in Christ. And so we ask you to come. You may not be able to attend a brick and mortar church anymore, or your circumstances today just may not allow that, or you may just be tuning in for many different reasons here. But whatever situation you're in, we know that God is in our midst as we are here gathered together. And as we bless the bread and the cup here today, your table and where you are becomes part of this one big table of the Lord. So we invite you now, not an invitation that we here give, we just share that invitation that Jesus gave, that you come and that you take of this bread, take of this cup, because you are Christ's and you are invited and you belong here. Let us pray. We pray, O oh God, that you may bless this bread that represents your body and bless this cup that represents your spilled blood and ask that you continue to show us how to live like you lived with love and compassion. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the words of the Apostle Paul, For what I received I pass on to you, that on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took the loaf, and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said to them, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took the cup and said, this cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink of this cup, you tell the Lord's story until he comes again. Won't you come? As you go through this day, this week, the days ahead, my prayer is that you will be open to sense the larger time and the larger space that you would allow God to work in you to build you into a house that shares His love, His mercy, and His grace with a world that so desperately needs it. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. I'm working on a building, I'm working on a building, hallelujah. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. 
It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost building. Hallelujah. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord. If I was a gambler, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd quit my gambling and I'd work on the building too. I'm working on a building. I'm working on a building. Hallelujah. I'm working on a building for my Lord, for my Lord. It's a Holy Ghost building. It's a Holy Ghost building. Hallelujah. It's a Holy Ghost building for my Lord, for my Lord.